to whatever it takes. And then D, deal with unresolved hurt. You've got to do that in two ways, by asking for forgiveness and by offering forgiveness. By asking forgiveness. James 5 and 16 says this, Admit your faults to one another and pray for each other that you might be healed. Admit to someone that you're wrong. You know, and then ask for forgiveness from them. And, and uh, you know, I don't know. Let me just kind of give you an example of this. You might be a person that has an unbelieving spouse and, and you've been really trying to get them to believe the gospel and you've been really pushy, you know. You, you've been leaving your Bible, your Bible on their pillow at night and you have gospel tracks on the toilet waiting there and every morning you get up singing and at the table you're singing Amazing Grace. I mean, I'm kind of being silly, right? I'm kind of being silly, but, but uh, you know, there's some words that you can say that are powerful in any relationship. All you've got to do is just say these three words, I was wrong. Those three words soften anybody's heart. Just say those words, I was wrong. And, and, and uh, let me tell you, I've had to say those words. Everybody's had to say those words. But there's something about those words that bring healing to a relationship in a powerful way. Especially if they're followed up with that right action and the appropriate thing. And you begin to do that. Come on. I just believe that we need to sometimes be willing to open ourselves up. Go to that person. I mean, the scripture even says it's so important that before you even bring your gift and offer it to the Lord at the altar, if there's something between you and somebody else, the scripture says, no, just leave the gift there. That's an important part. I'll have you know. Leave your offering there. Don't take it with you, but, 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 but go and find that person. Make things right. Why? Because God values relationships. I'm going to tell you something at the end of your life when you're laying there, and I pray that you, know, you go peacefully. Am I right? That's my prayer for everybody. But we're all going to go one day. Am I right? The death rate has been 100% for, just, for everybody, except, well, actually besides Elijah and Enoch. But anyway, that's a whole other story. But I, I, I pray on that day. Hey, you won't be thinking to yourself, oh, if I could just, you know, uh, see my stuff one more time. You know, take me into my living room and let me look at my trinkets, the little things I've bought across the years. Let me look at my yard one more time, how beautiful trimmed it is. No, 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 no. You're going to be saying, let me see my kids my grandkids, my mom, my dad, my friends, my family. Come on, everybody. Amen. Just do what you need to do. Ask for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. And then you have to also offer forgiveness. Colossians 3.13 says this, Be gentle and ready to forgive. Never hold grudges. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Amen. You've got to be willing to do that. And then let me give you the next one here. We're pressing right on here. E, we've got to enlist support from others. How many of you know that you can't do this alone? Amen? I'm so grateful today for the body of Christ. I'm so grateful today to have brothers and sisters in Christ who love me and I love them. And, and, and we, we, we fight for each other today. Amen? And, and that's important because I'll tell you, there's a lot of places that you go that you'll find the opposite of support for positive relationships. Whenever my wife and I, across many years of ministry, have dealt with, you know, maybe we'll hear that some struggle is happening in some marriage or relationship, and we'll ask each other this question, I wonder who has their ear. Don't we ask that too? Who is it? We want to know who's talking to that person. Because let me tell you something, that person may not be giving them the world's best advice. Sometimes they say things like, oh, just forget it. It's not worth it. I haven't spoke to my kids for 25 years. It, it don't matter. I, yes, it does matter. Come on, it does matter. Well, I, I, Just let it all go. You need to be happy. No, let me tell you something. Sometimes you need someone to say, hey, it's going to be okay. Let's believe the Lord. Let's get in there. Let's believe God. Amen. And you know, sometimes the worst people to go to when you're really struggling is your parents. You want to know why they see you? Your mama's little boy. Your daddy's little girl. Right? 
in marital relationships, I mean, you know, don't go to mom and dad. It's okay to go to them for comfort, but, but you need some people that will tell you the truth, speaking the truth in love, telling you to have the courage to stand strong, people that know how to pray, people that know how to believe God. So what am I saying? I'm saying enlist the support of others. Proverbs 24, verse 3 says this, it takes wisdom to have a good family, and it takes understanding to make it strong. Proverbs 19, 20 says, get all the advice and instruction that you can. I think that's good advice right there, those two verses. And I'll tell you, this church, we're committed. We're committed to helping you find places where you can get encouragement to make things better in your life. Amen. Amen. The point is, don't go through it alone. Amen. I love Celebrate Recovery. It's a place where you can find a connection for your hurts, habits, and hang-ups. And I'll tell you, we care about your relationships, and we want our church to be a place full of healthy, strong, growing, fulfilling families. Amen. God wants that. Amen. Doreen and I have had our tough days, but we didn't give up, and I hope you won't either. Amen. God will help you through. And then the last point is this, A, B, C, D, E, F, focus on trusting Jesus. you got to get him at the center of your life. The easiest thing to do in life is lose your focus. Am I right? So many things call for us, especially in this modern world. You know, 150 years ago, you'd have got the crops in and, and you'd have had plenty of time to sit there and, you know, watch them and watch them grow. And I mean, life was different back then. It wasn't so much pressure. Today, you drive an hour through traffic one way to get to work. You Most of you work more than 40 hours a week. You work hard in life. It's easy to get your focus on work and on just trying to get everything done and, and we lose our focus. Listen, keep your focus on Jesus. Keep your focus on Him, right? Hebrews 12 says this, we must focus on Jesus, the source and goal of our faith. I like the way the King James Version says it, the author and the finisher of our faith. Keep your eyes upon him. And marriage in particular is a three-legged stool. You can't sit on a ladder that only has two legs. Am I right? You have to have that third leg. A two-legged stool is going to fall over. It has no stability. It takes three, and God never meant for marriage to be just two. God meant for marriage to be three. You, your spouse, and God. And, and we need to put Christ at the center of our life, and in particular at the center of every marriage. And I believe that God wants Christ to be the center of every single family. Amen. Keep your focus upon Him. Keep your focus upon Him. And I know you say, well, Pastor, you have listening to you. You're talking a lot about marriage. I'm not even married. That's all right. That's okay. But I'm, I'm just going to tell you something. You've got to keep your focus on the Lord. If you're a family of one, keep your focus on Him. Keep your focus on Jesus. Take that to the Lord. And the Bible says this. It says that the God, God who is at work within you will give you the will and the power to achieve His purpose. Peep Jesus in your family. Amen? Amen. You may need uh, to read some Christian books or have some counseling or gather some friends around you to pray, but do whatever's necessary. Keep your focus on Him. I think the best thing that anybody can do is every single day spend some time with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Take some time out. T t turn the television off. Turn the media off. Put your phone over there. Amen. Don't have any Facebook until you get your face in the book. Okay. Amen. You know, get with the Lord Jesus Christ. Talk to Him. Focus on Him. And let me tell you, when you do that, you're going to discover He'll begin to speak to you about stuff. He'll begin to talk to you. He'll begin to reveal things to you. you know, a lot of people think that prayer is just having this big old long monologue with the Lord. Let me tell you, it's okay to talk to the Lord. But I'm going to tell you, one of the greatest things you can do in prayer just sit. Just sit without anybody moving. Just sit. Find a still place. Like we sang earlier, be still. And let me tell you, when you're quiet, 
And you know, I want to tell you something. Sometimes it takes more than five minutes. Sometimes it takes 30 minutes for me of sitting there. You think, you waste 30 minutes just sitting? Let me tell you, if I can hear the Lord speak to me, it's worth those 30 minutes. Oh, I listen to praise and worship, but then there's a moment I shut all that off, put my phone down, sit there. Then he comes, hey, Bob, is that you, Lord? And you feel his presence. And he'll begin to speak to you. He'll begin to talk to you. This is what you need to do. Do this. Make the telephone call. Do what you need to do. He'll be there. Would you stand with me today? Thank you for just letting me share this message today. Amen. God bless you so very much. So happy. So happy. Amen.